Now that we've finished our back pocket, we also have our yoke piece and our contour waistband. Let's finalize this back pattern piece. Come over here to the grain line and get your arrowhead going up to the top of the main body. And then of course, all the way down to the ankle. Let's come to the grain line here and let's label this back jean main body. Let's also put on here today's date. If you're doing this for a client, you can also write the client's name or if it's for a certain factory or a fit model, you can put some more information on there. Since I'm doing a size six, I wanna put a nice big size six on here to match all of my other pattern pieces that say size six. We also wanna come over here to center back and we're gonna label this center back. Now let's take a minute to go ahead and erase all of the extra lines that are on the outside of the pattern piece. Okay, up here at the top of the main pants, this is where we're gonna sew it to the yoke seam. And I'm gonna show you how to do a flat fell seam, which looks like this. It's a double top stitch, and all of the raw edges are hidden on both sides. In order to do this seam, we need to have 3 quarters of an inch seam allowance. And then, of course, get your double notches and make sure that they are square with the seam. Now while we're doing this, take out your back yoke piece. And we can see here where this sews to the back. Now on mine, I'm noticing I forgot my two double notches when I transferred this over. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure this walks correctly. And I'm gonna get my two notches back on here now. Now following along this bottom edge of the back yoke, we also need to make that three quarters of an inch. And I'm gonna erase the grain line so it doesn't get confused to be a notch. Now back up in here, I have my location for my double notch. And I wanna make sure that those are square with the angle of the bottom of the yoke. Now for me, I wanna double check this just one last time. So I'm gonna line up the center back of the yoke at the center back of the main pants. And I'm gonna walk these with the correct sides together right along that seam, making sure my notches match and making my way all the way to the side seam and making sure the side seam matches. Now this yoke piece here, we're gonna do half inch seam allowance for center back, half inch seam allowance all along the top edge, and half inch seam allowance along the side seam. And always remember that this side seam has a slight curve to it, so make sure you're getting that curve when you add your seam allowance. Okay, along with having three quarters of an inch here at the yoke seam, we did half inch above and around. We're doing half of an inch here for the crotch and the center back, half of an inch on the side seams, half of an inch on the inseams. And then I'm doing one inch down here at the ankle so she can try these jeans on with different pairs of shoes and find out exactly where we want that location to be.
because we'll have a little bit extra down below. Now don't do any of your notches yet on your main pants because we want to compare these back to the front pants and make some notches to match up. So at this point you should have all your seam allowances for your back main body as well as your back yoke and your back patch pocket. Let's take a look at the front pattern pieces. Take out your under bag your front pocket facing, as well as your top bag. And let's talk about getting the seam allowance on each individual one together. Let's start here with the under bag. Now the side seam of your pants is going to have half of inch seam allowance. And the top edge of your main body will also have half of an inch seam allowance. Now the front and bottom edge of the under bag. We don't know exactly yet where that's going to be until we do a fitting on the dress form with your final mock-up. If you remember with the top bag, the side seam is different from the under bag. And also when we do a fitting, we have an opportunity to make this into a small dart or to let it relax completely. So that will determine underneath where this bag is going to line up with this bag. Now with all of that said, what we're going to do is we're going to add one inch seam allowance so we have room to play with and cut extra away. Now since we added one inch seam allowance here, let's do the same thing on the top bag. Now for the top bag, here's your side seam, and the side seam is going to have half of an inch. Also along here, this is going to sew to the waistband, so we need half of an inch. And don't forget that it has a slight curve to it, so make sure you're following that exactly. When you're sewing this pocket for the front hip pocket, this top edge here, you don't want a lot of bulky seam allowance in there. So we're just going to do a little tiny quarter of an inch seam allowance. So that's this edge right here in red. So go ahead and erase any extra lines or edges. And notice that we have not put any notches on this yet. The last pattern piece that we have is the uh, front pocket facing. Now this is the side seam and the top edge of the pants. Same as the under bag, it's half of an inch and half of an inch. And again, as you're adding these seam allowances, don't forget that this top edge is a curve and this side seam is a curve and they all need to perfectly match right back to each other. Now on this facing piece, this edge that we put in here is already deep enough into the pocket. So basically that is your finished raw edge. So we can come right up to the top here and right off to the side seam here. And this edge here will basically get an overlock stitch. Now during the demonstration, we already wrote on here front pocket facing. Officially, you would put it here, so it would be FT pocket facing and then today's date. Out here I would write a large 
for the size that I'm working on. Let's come over here and we'll label the under bag. Again, I want to make sure this grain and nice is nice and dark. And this is again, this is going to be the front under bag. And today's date. Now the top bag for this side of the body is actually, this is the correct side up. But what's gonna happen is, eventually, we're gonna cut two of these, so we will have the correct pocket to match for the left side of the body and then the other one for the right side of the body. So for now, what we'll do is we'll continue writing the name of this here on this side of the pattern piece. So this is the front top bag and today's date. Size six. So in production, you would see it that this is the under bag, this is the top bag. But since we're working on our muslin mock-up at home, it's okay, you'll realize it when you get to that point to switch between the two. Now all three of these pattern pieces are gonna stack together. And at some point in time, we wanna have some kind of a notch to line them up here on the side seam. We also wanna have a notch up here where the top bag is gonna line up on top of the facing and on top of the under bag. Now this one up here, we don't know yet until we do our fitting. So we're not gonna add a notch to these two pieces but we can do a notch here at the side seam. Now if you take a close look at yours, the facing, the bottom edge of the facing here, we could turn that into a notch and it will line up with the top bag right here. So the bottom of the front facing turns into a notch here at the top bag. Make sure you have all of your edges and corners lined up perfectly to find that notch. Then we want to repeat and have that notch here on the under bag. So I'll put the front facing underneath here. I'll line up the corners and the top edges and then I can see the under bag coming right here, and that becomes our notch. And then I can double check that by lining up the side seam and the bottom corner edge of the pockets. And I can see here we have the side seam notch at the same location. Now what we need to do is on the front main body, we need to make sure we have a quarter inch here for the top pocket, and we need to also make sure we have the same notch. So again, here's the main body. I need to add some paper to this, so we can add half an inch to the top of here and a quarter inch to the top of this. And I also need to make sure I transfer this notch to the main body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up this pattern piece. I'm going to erase all of the extra lines and add some paper to the top edge of this. Okay, so I cleaned up my pattern piece. I added some paper to the top here. I already drew in my um, one inch for my mock fly and then half inch for the crotch inseam. One inch down here at the ankles and another half inch along the side seam. Now up here for the top edge of this pocket, I want to do the same quarter inch seam allowance that I did on my top bag. Now 
Now I also want to get this notch here that matches the other bag liners. So I'm going to match up this corner of my pocket with this corner on the main body, as well as the side seams and the top edge. And then I can transfer this notch here to the front of the main body. All right, bring out your back pattern piece. So I call this back jean main body plus the date and the size. So I'm going to come along here to the, about the same location on my front pattern piece and we'll call this front jean main body. And today's date and of course, put your name or your client's name or any other information in here. And then I want to get the same size at about the same location so it's easy to find. Let's go ahead and get our arrowheads along the grain line right to the top of the pattern piece. And all the way down here to the ankle. And then here we label this center back. We need to come over here and label this center front. Double check yours that your horizontal bounce line, your crotch level line, as well as your knee level line are nice and dark and they go right to the edges of the pattern piece. Now let's go ahead and get some side seam notches to match the front and the back. Since we're already doing a notch here on the front for all of my pattern, uh, for all of my pocket pieces, let's go ahead and get the same notch here onto the back. What I can do is I can line up the back crotch level line and horizontal balance line, as well as the side seam. And then I can transfer that notch here onto the back pattern piece. Keep in mind that we changed the front side seam to add a little more volume for the front pocket. So just make sure you're lining up the crotch level line here, the horizontal bounce line there, and then you're getting the same notch location up here on the back. Now moving along the side seams, another great location to match these up would be here at the knee level. Remember, you do not want to draw your notch straight across. The notch needs to be square with the side seam itself. So you'll start here at the knee level. And what you can do is you can bring your ruler in and slide it out. And you can make sure that you're staying parallel and square with the side seam right here at the knee level. And you can put a mark right there and connect it back. And you'll notice it's going at a slight angle and this is correct. We'll do the same thing here for the back. So here's my knee level. I'm making sure that my ruler is square and following parallel to the side seam. So I can follow this line out to here, which matches right back to the knee level. And now I know I'm square. So now when I line up the notch from the front and the notch from the back, they'll be perfectly stacked right on top of each other. Now that we have notches for the side seams, we also need to have notches here for the inseams. 
You don't want your notches on the inseams to be in the same location as the side seams because they might get confused. So what we're going to do is we're going to go a little bit below the knee level and put a double notch. So go ahead and come over to your front pattern piece to the inseam. We'll go a little bit below the knee level and we'll put a double notch in here quarter inch away one quarter inch apart. And again, make sure you're square with the curve of the inseam. Now I can put my inseams together right here at the knee level. And I'm making sure the curve matches the whole distance. And then I can transfer that double notch to the back pattern piece. The only other notch that we really need on these pattern pieces is here on the front, up here at center front. So go ahead and following along with your center front and also square with this top of your pants. Let's get our notch here for center front. Now just to make sure that this is not confusing, I'm going to go ahead and just put a little white out on here. The last pattern piece is going to be our waistband. Now if you're doing just a straight waistband, then um, you'll decide on how wide is your waistband plus half of an inch at the bottom and a quarter inch at the top. Again, we're adding a quarter inch all along the top edge. We already have our one inch extension at center front. We're doing half of an inch seam allowance at the back and half of an inch here where it's going to sew to the top of the pants. Now earlier in another demo, we had already put a notch here for the side seams. And I just want to make sure I have a notch here at center front. And this pattern piece, we've already labeled it and we have our grain line here on the straightaway here in the front of the pant. Okay, so let's review our pattern pieces. We have the back main body and the front main body. For the back, we have a patch pocket as well as the back yoke seam. For the front, we have the under bag, the facing, as well as the top bag for our pockets. And then going across the top of both of these, we have the contour waistband turns into a straight waistband, or some of you are just going to do a straight waistband the whole way. It depends if you want to wear a belt or not. In the next video, I'm going to block out some muslin so we can cut all of these out in muslin fabric so we can do a test cut and sew. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about how to sew the back yoke piece, this pocket, as well as these pocket pieces. And then we'll do a fitting so then we can finish how we're going to do the fitting up here. And we'll also finish what's going on with these two front edges of the pockets underneath.